the biggest lie, the life of the apostle Paul or Saul from the book of Acts and the epistles. I mean, we can clearly see in the gospels fictional narrative, but how many scholars take their time to say, hey, these seven authentic Pauline epistles, we need to reevaluate how we're looking at these things. Kenneth Humphreys is going to take us down a path. He himself has visited many of the areas that Paul claimed to have walked. And he himself says, this man's carrying way too much weight on his shoulders to be a historical figure. Something's off here. I hope you guys enjoy this whole show because I really enjoy him. He always brings a new insight that I've never understood or looked at things in that angle. He's a good friend of mine. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys share this out somewhere. Leave a comment on what you think about this or if you have something that you can add to the discussion. Who is the Apostle Paul? We are Myth Vision. Did you read that paper? It was a friend of mine. He's not a scholar, by the way. He's just an independent research guy, you know, and he, he came to a conclusion where he thought Paul looked highly suspicious as a rewrite of, of, you know, something like false prophet in the Old Testament kind of stuff. I did reread. I did read it, yes. And uh, it, it, it was, well, well, yeah, very plausible. Very plausible. Very plausible. You never um, <laughs> He, the, the, it struck me the writer was himself coming from a Christian perspective, like a, a struggling Christian. Put it yeah. that way. Am I am I right? Yeah, he was. He's no. He's an atheist now. He he still <laughs> believes. Yeah, he still believes that Paul is um, kind of like um, he he looks at Jesus and sees Jesus as a celestial, not the same way that like Richard Carrier, so to speak, more like astro theology. He thinks that. There's it's a it's a it's an allegory, it's mythology, and whoever takes this crap literal, they're missing the point. And uh, Paul himself, he says, is also a myth. It's a rewrite of Old Testament characters. Every person in the New Testament is just a copy or a made up story based off Old Testament characters, and the Old Testament characters are based off of, you know, the sun or or the moon or the something. And so it goes on. Yeah, I hope you press the recall button. I am. You know, which... I am. <laughs> I, you, let me get it started. Yeah. You want me to just go ahead and get it started? And... Well, we've started already. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that there there is a, a very plausible argument that that that, uh, that that would appeal to any rationalist. If you come from a, a, a faith position, your 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 vision is. Cr- clouded of course all from the beginning but it makes perfect and obvious sense from from a rational point of view that not only are the stories second third fourth hand but but that but that it, it but it is all allegory trying to make a different theological point you know and 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 yet you can say for the simple minded you have to make the story you know give it a human element then they can relate to it you know, it's a bit like having a, a, a romantic soft subplot in a story about Stalingrad. You know, if you just showed Stalingrad, people, oh, it's too much. But if you show a, a romance within that, oh, they can relate to the story. <laughs> so Paul, Paul's our, Paul is, ah, he's our target today. And I figured, you know, you've actually told us on the last show, you've traveled a lot of the places they claim a historical Paul traveled this guy had to be buku's rich to be able to do the things he's claimed to do i'm just gonna leave it up to you you're the scholar i i truly first of all want to say thank you for coming back on the show and i really want to say thank you for all your work and anyone who's watching right now i am omnipresent for the next five minutes so if you don't subscribe to his channel and if you don't go and get his book okay jesus never existed and check out his materials I might end up causing the plagues of Egypt to fall upon you. Just saying, okay? And nonetheless, <laughs> if you're not a fan of Kenneth Humphrey, you're not human. So just go back to Mars. 
Um, I'm a huge fan of this guy, and I really appreciate this. For our new audience who's never heard of you, they're going to really love your voice if they don't agree with your ideas. That's fine. They're going to love your voice. That's all that matters. I'll just start talking then. <laughs> what I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, Paul is, is, is in many ways the main man. I mean, the, the, you, you could say that the, uh, the, the, the New Testament is essentially about Paul. It's more about Paul than it is about Jesus. And Paul sort of either his writings or what's written about him fills up more of that material than that little fairy tale about Jesus, you know. Um, so, yeah, we should, we should look at him. And, yes, okay, you say about following his trips. I have, you know, for many years now. I have. I, you know, I haven't completed the, 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 the whole s s circuit because it's just not possible um, in terms of danger zones and the rest of it. But insofar as it, that area is accessible, yeah, I've been there and I've, I've really enjoyed it. I mean, you do. Uh, whether it's it, the, the claims made about Paul being there, uh, whether they're fictitious or not, the places themselves are fascinating. You know, I mean, you know, the, the, you know the, 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 there is a history there, where, yeah, and, 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 and that I've enjoyed. Uh, but it does give, you know, when you visit a place like Philippi or Corinth or, or any of the other places, you get some feel. You just get a feel for the, that particular take, time and place. And then you then you can set against it. You know, you take a city like Ephesus. You go to Ephesus, right? Very impressive city, the major city of the Roman Empire. And then you try and think, yeah, one day Paul came here and he caused a riot. You know, it, 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 the whole city was, it was taken up, you know, infuriated by this man and he had to run away and the rest of it. And you think, mm, I don't think that is possible, you know. <laughs> You come out of the harbour area, you see the great, uh, you know, theatre area, you, you wander up one street after another, the various temples and what have you, as a city of perhaps, you know, a quarter of a million people, and some Jewish guy comes into town and, and, and says, I, I, I know the truth and you're all wrong. I mean, you know, can you really imagine that they would have given him the time of day? I mean, you know, I mean, that's the that's what what you get if you visit these places. You get a real feel for where where, where this story is coming from. I have so, a hard um, time buying it. I, I really do. I love what you're doing there because <clears throat> the more I'm studying about pagan parallels and stuff, and we just did a show with Dr. Robert McNair Price, and he did like a pagan mm -hmm. parallel one, and it just you know, it's like so. How really crazy would this idea be? When they had all these gods already that looked very much like this in similar ways, it's not like they blow their their gasket and go, "Let's kill this guy." You know, it's like, dude, you you're just bringing another freaking guy like we already have. What's so special? You know, it's not like they're gonna freak out. But I um I wanted to delve into some issues, you know, um and 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 and, and things that you have found about. Paul, you know, one of the things about your YouTube channel that I love is that you have these episodes where you're like, you know, this is fraud. Look, it's obvious forgery. It's obvious lie. It's obvious. And I want to catch Paul red handed. I mean, he claimed to be not a liar over and over and over. <laughs> And, well, that means he's not a liar, right? <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Not a liar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, he, he, he does. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I, I try and give, give Paul, uh, uh, if you like, a reasonable space to make, or the Christians writing about him, give him a reasonable place to see, OK, let's see if we can go with that. But the, but the, the towels become so extraordinary that you only have to run by, hang on. You know, like they stoned him uh, at, at Demra or somewhere where he, you know, or, or Perge, was it? They stoned him, but yet... The next day he got up and he went off more missionary work. And, and you think, well, that doesn't sound like a, a real person who's, who's stoned to the extent that they thought he was dead. You know, he must have been seriously hurt and yet brushes himself. Off he goes. And you think, mm, yeah, this is stretching plausibility just too far. It, it easily goes into the miraculous. And, and, and when you not only see that in one story, but in every story. The whole bunch of these stories, you add up, it adds up to 
They're not talking about a real person. They're talking about a superlative apostle, someone who ticks all the, boss, all, the, all, the, all the boxes of what he should be, of what a church trying to give itself some sort of justification in the second century wants to tell people of how they got to where they were. You know, they're not going to say this is a new racket we've just set up in the last few years by this product. No, they're going to they're trying to establish uh, a legitimacy. And I think they hang that on this guy called Paul. Right. They hang it on Paul. So he does the whole bit for them. You know, the, the 12 disciples. Well, Gosh, they don't get a look in much, do we? We can't follow the, the, you know, the, the, the perambulations of them around the world. You know, they go off all, all these to Persia and Afghanistan and everywhere else where you can't follow it at all. They get forgotten. It's all about Paul. And he, he, and, and, and he writes theology, he founds churches. Uh, he, you know, he, he takes the faith to Europe. And then he takes it to Rome. And, of course, then he has the big finish, the, the martyrdom. It's the, the whole thing is just too much, too much to be believable. I, you said that in a way. I, <clears throat> and, look, I, I'm not like I've well read. OK, I just just a host of a show. Uh, I do read. I just not well read. Like I don't have a lot of books under my belt. And the way that you just said that was very unique. I'm glad that we made this about this show because I've never thought of it that way. You know, it, you always hear scholars get hung up on seven authentic and this this ridiculous like I think that Christianity's ideas rub off a lot on some of the scholarship. And I love what you what you said there. So for our audience, correct me if I'm wrong, you're saying what we have is a way of making one character carry all the weight of what the church went through when it started changing ideas, heading towards a Pauline type of type of uh, thought process. So it really wasn't a guy. This is kind of like this movement and how this yeah. movement became, in a sense. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's entirely. Now, was there an initial Paul character behind it all? Could oh, be. now that's an interesting point. I mean, I... When I wrote my book, which was some years ago now, I didn't come out and say Paul's as fabricated as Jesus. I didn't want to say that because I thought, oh, come on, it, it's easy for someone in the 21st century to say they didn't exist, this didn't exist. There were, you know, you know, it's sort of denial. It sort of, you know, it just sounds so negative. It so it sounds so unscholarly. But so I was reluctant to go down that route. And even now. I will concede there may have been someone and there may have been someone even with the name Paul, although, you know, that's questionable. But what sort of person and how important was he? You know, now, I think that in that era, the world was awash with charlatans or, if you prefer, holy men. Right. <laughs> There's a wash oh. with them. The, 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 the Roman Empire had integrated you know, a vast number of mini cultures, with their, all with their own localised gods, and everyone's in their pitching. And the, these religions that were coming together in a more uh, global or, 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 or pan-Roman uh, uh, existence, they, they were competing with each other. So they stole ideas from each other. They borrowed ideas that worked and dropped the ones that didn't work. Even within Christianity, there were many variants. You know, there was no one unified church right. until it was imposed <laughs> upon. You know, there, there were many competing churches. And and, and, and so you've, you've got a situation where you, uh, a character perhaps... He started, you know, with the idea of you know, maybe he was a very successful spiritual character or holy man or, or quack or, or fraudster. Whatever he was, right, he was successful. Yeah. It sort of and you and you can imagine, well, how could he be successful? Well, you only have to take some examples from your um, your own uh, American background there of, of, of uh, uh, evangelical Christianity, where you've had scams. Some of them have been shown in movies where wired up 
a preacher identifies somebody who's suffering and he gives them the formula, hallelujah, you know, they can, they, they can walk, they, you know, they've, they've sold, sold a particular ailment and then they pass the plate round and all the dollars go into it. I mean, yes, so there, it's a successful business scam or holy work and, you know, Paul could have been such a character. The, everybody was very suspicious in that age. And, you know, it, it was sincerely felt that, you, that, that, that it was possible to foresee the future. That's why it became, you know, a, 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 a very restricted uh, profession. Because if, if someone foresaw the, the say, the, the, the future of, of an emperor, and it wasn't a good future, that he would be dead soon, you know, he was liable to be executed for making... You know, <laughs> For that sort of dabbling in magic works, so you know there was a strong belief in that 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 sort of prophecy stuff, and 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 you can see how you know well experience of people today, you know they still check their stars, their horoscopes. Um, it, it's easy enough. People will always be intrigued to know, well, you'll have a good day tomorrow, or or you're going to come into money this week. Yeah, you know, people were interested in that stuff. Certainly, they were interested from the point of view of uh, curing of ailments and their their illnesses and so on, which is uh, an obvious uh, uh, marketplace. And if we have a marketplace like that, snake oil salesmen appear, don't they? And, and their particular magic charm, whether it's Jesus or Zeus or whoever it is, he's the one, he does the magic, and, and, and you can see how it can get started. Now, okay, so you can start with something. Where? Well, we don't really know. I would suggest it would probably be Syria, if anywhere. I'm doubtful it was Judea as such, you know, but probably Syria, where there's a lot more, more uh, uh, competition between uh, different uh, religious groups. So, yes, somebody got started, and, a, and it became, I think, possible that you wrote something and then you ascribed it to this person, this person who's got a bit of a reputation, you know, this is how it, how you present, uh, uh, yeah, and you write a small bit. It might simply be a single page or, or papyrus leaf indicating um, a, a curse or a, a, or a blessing from whoever God you're practicing. So that's how the thing gets started. Now, after that, of course, you've got the whole needs of Christianity to get Paul to do the bits they need done. Do the bits they need done. So, of course, you've got to have the, the spread of the faith. That's the real, you know, the story is uh, so attractive, so powerful that, you know, unknown thousands flock to hear this magic word. A word comes out of Paul's mouth. Everybody accepts it. You know, conversions all over the show. And, and, and so you have the first great myth created that somehow this faith spread across the world, you know, instead of being just another, you know, Mickey Mouse religion in the corner, backwater of the Roman Empire, suddenly we have the, the pretense that it was instantly successful, instantly popular everywhere. And in fact, but if you take the real, real history of the Jews and how they reacted to Christianity, it was like, who on earth are these people? This is a load of garbage. We don't accept it. So, of course, the Jews are hard-hearted, aren't they? They won't accept any of this stuff. So, you know, so he moves on to the more gullible pagans who perhaps were, were not quite as canny as, the, as, as the, uh, the Jews. It's interesting what you're saying. I, I wanted to ask you, and I know there's no way to nail down all these, but uh, – in terms of dating, Paul, how do you look at that? I mean, do you even try or do you say, well, look, there could have been like, like, are there any that you think might be authentic or you really not even really go into all that and just say, look, we don't even have authentics to begin with. And if there were authentics, they probably were embellished because we, we, we have like hand downs, you know, of, of these writings and rewrites of these writings. What are your thoughts on the dating of Paul? Because I know they say the seven are in the fifties or sixties. And, and, and I'm like, <clears throat> I have a hard time because even in the authentics and like first Thessalonians four, you have Paul saying that the wrath of God is coming on the Jews. Like 
he knows something he should not. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. I think that's a good giveaway to the fact it was it was post seventy, post post the you know the the, the ruination of Judaism. Yes, I th- I think that's likely. I'm not hung up on 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 dating the the epistles. You know, it's like as if it was holy grail. You know, we've got a document and we you know it's really important because I think they are all composite works that have been worked on. Over over like two centuries at least before they you get any hard copy that that we have you know they've right. been worked on and quite when any of that material was put together yeah it, it's difficult to say if you read some of the epistles you know how they they seem to reach an a a amen stage and then they start off again and it's as if as it is several shorter pieces have been stitched together. You know, so, you know, it's like there's uh, stops and restarts, stops and restarts to get the epistles of a length that, for me, proves uh, with, without any contradiction. I think they are were never letters. They were never letters. They are religious uh, uh, expositions of a particular point of view, but no one popped them in the post and sent them off to here, there and everywhere. You know, you just have to think of how does that happen then? How does that happen? How do they manage to get these? You know, uh, sending an epistle to the whole world, you know, or even even to all the churches of Asia or, you know, even to a church. How do you, uh, you know, wouldn't you have to say to the postman, you know, take this document and deliver it to Jacob when you get to, you know, Corinth or something. Wouldn't you have to say that? Wouldn't you have to give him specific a, a, a directions as to finding these places? And, and what a heroic postman if he's going to follow around Paul's route and try and deliver a letter. You know, oh, I know he's gone off now, but it, here's his letter. It, 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 to me, none of it hangs together. None of it hangs together. You said something. But it's, Oh, I was going to say, you said something interesting about the whole how you can see a development that, that, for example, we look at the epistles, right? And we see like Second Peter. We know that's not written by Peter, okay? And you talked about these forgeries being written in the name of. There's, it, it, they did it because there's, there's some possible guy at the root here that might be, his name might carry some value. There may be a Peter, possibly. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. But it's obvious people are writing forgeries of him. How do we know what the real guy even said if there was an original guy? It's it, to me like you know this is where it gets very complicated. But dealing with what we or, go ahead. I'm sure you wanted to say something on that. No, no, no I don't mean to interrupt. But you, you, you can see how the, the a, what the truth is, there is a a process of accretion of it, religious ideas. There's a debate going on as to what those ideas would be. Sometimes they're so poorly digested that they contradict something that appears a few pages earlier, but it's all put into the mix and it's worked on in different editions. And, and, and we, are, we eventually get to the stage where the church then endorses it. There is a, eventually a stage where the church endorses it. The bits that they, they don't want, they throw out and they're, they're heretical and not having those. But even within the body of material, it's got, it still is is patchy. It, 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 it's, I mean, if, hell, I, I've just recently reread Romans, Paul's epistle to the Romans. What a load of garbage. I mean, honestly, it, it, its language is so torturous. into this idea of justification and righteousness and, you know, uh, grace of God, and all these bits and pieces he throws in. And, and it's, it's, it's obviously it, it, in part of a debate that's going on within the church where it's trying to work out what it really believes. I mean, could Paul really have written all that material in the middle of the first century? There were no Gospels. He doesn't seem to know anything about the historical Jesus when he writes. You know, so yet he comes out with all this theology, all this deep theology that that, gen, that centuries of churchmen pondered over. You know, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you. I must, I must applaud you on that because this gets to the. Ah, you know, when you're trying to get to something and and you're asking. Well, I was asking scholars. I've been doing this a lot. 
And I've had guys come on and go, you know, I believe there was a there was a historical Jesus, but Paul did some wackadoodle stuff with him, right? And then you got some guys who are like, well, we're not sure if there was. This is more reason for me to believe Jesus never existed or the guy existed 100 years prior and somehow had enough time to develop something like this. Because I only say that because it's like, the complexity at which the Christology Paul brings, you know, this guy only lived 20 years ago. And you're telling me there's this system of thought that is so encompassing this person, supposedly, that is just so rich that he's able to write all these letters about. He says he gets it from Revelation and, he, and, and, and from Scripture alone. He doesn't get it from any man. Yep. I mean, this yep. is weird. This is weird, you know. Yeah, you're told in a very imprecise and, and, and vague way in which Paul is getting these communications from, from Jesus in heaven, and yet it's so comprehensive. You think, you know, it, it, it's better than a VCR recording, isn't it? He's it, getting all this detailed information, you know, from the Lord in heaven. And, and, and you know, the, the, it, you, you have to start from that position of religious gullibility to even entertain it. If we said this stuff about any other character apart from Jesus, everybody would say, oh, it's rubbish. You know, if you try and say this about Apollo or, 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 or Dionysus, you know, nobody would say, oh, yeah, well, you say that, but it's just not true. You know, yes, you're right. There's a richness. Use that word. The Christians would like that. There's a richness about Paul's material that is way out of step with what is happening at that time. Let's take an example. Galatians. Who were the Galatians? Who were the Galatians? Right. Well, there's various theories about the Galatians. We know there's an area in central Anatolia called Galatia. You know, got its name originally from the Gauls that went that far. You know, there's Galatia. So, uh, uh, and, and, and yet maybe he didn't go to Galatia proper, which is up by um, the, the Ankara, you know, it, that area because Paul wasn't really in that area. They said you could have it's either the North Galatians or the South Galatians around a few Roman cities that were beyond the Taurus Mountains. Okay. Now, you think, okay, but we're talking tribesmen here, aren't we? We're talking tribesmen. They probably had their own unwritten... Well, they did have their own unwritten language. Paul's writing in Greek, you know, and he writes highbrow theology to new converts that he spent, what, a week, a day? I don't know how long he was there. You know, he, he gave them a sermon. If you took the story literally, he gave them a sermon. They believed, right? He goes off and then whatever it is, a week, a year later, a letter arrives. And the greatest sort of, of uh, uh, detailed and, and, and torturous sort of theology and that's supposed to be convincing. And not only did they have this document sent to them in a language they couldn't understand, that you know, they decided to preserve it, keep it, so that someone else a century later can collect it as one of Paul's epistles. He sent us this letter. You know, at what point do you start saying, I'm not buying this? Yeah. This doesn't together. Well to step it further, because I don't know the the <clears throat> I don't know the the geographic location or anything in terms of that. I'd love to research what you're talking here more, but to go further, he's also talking about Peter. He's talking in this letter. He's James sending spies to spy out his freedom in Christ. How's that relevant to them? Like, so you got to ask so many more questions and there's more unanswerable things. When you start becoming skeptical, that's what it started to do for me was, it made me open up in a very, and it, it helped me knowing that we don't know, helped me realize no one knows. Like it's all, you, you're making this thing make sense the best you can. And I think that's fascinating. And it's written in high Koine. It's like, this isn't just regular common Greek. This is high Koine Greek being written in high theology. This is not basic stuff. That, and it's very complex. His arguments are, you know, very strange. Um, he seems to spiritualize a lot of the Old Testament understanding of things too. It's it's you know like one place I had a rabbi on the show recently was talking about First Corinthians nine where he quotes Deuteronomy like thirty two or something where it talks about a law of God to Israel 
that you're supposed to not muzzle your oxen while it's working for you in the field. It needs to be allowed to eat whatever it wants to eat. And Paul goes, but is this not speaking of us, brethren, that God is? And then he goes right after that and does exactly what you said. He's like, and that you should bless me and, you know, give us earthly things while we give you heavenly things. We should deserve our, our wages. You know, we're laboring like the oxen. And are you going to muzzle me? It's like, where did yeah. you get this in Deuteronomy? I don't understand you spiritualist. He's like a Benny Hinn, you know? Yeah. yeah anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that parallel, of course, to a modern preacher is, is very relevant. It's the same sort of character. Now, I might be accused of being biased or, or cynical, but to me, these are charlatans out to make a quick buck out of people's gullibility. And con men have done that since the beginning of time, haven't they? You know, if, 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 if you have a, a way of doing a little bit of so-called magic and you don't let on the secret, you will fool people. And, and, and you can appeal to things that really matter to them, like someone they love is dying. Maybe they are dying. But they know death is not far away. You are going to appeal to a real core value, core issue with them, and then you offer them something. Believe what I'm telling you, you are saved. You know, you don't have to prove it. They just have to believe it. Did and you ever hear that. about the temple priest? That, that not the, uh, not necessarily the Jewish ones, because I have no evidence of this on them. But this was known in these places like Ephesus and other places where the pagan temples, their priest would pay. And I can't remember the name of the guy. He was a Roman, I believe. And he was an engineer. He knew how to set stuff up where you would walk up to a temple door and it automatically open or there would be moving objects. And they would think the gods were doing it. They tricked the, the common folk to throw their coin in that the god lives in this temple. And just very interesting kind of ways of tricking people, whether it was a temple, whether it was, you know, the wine, water into wine, you know, those type of things. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. You're speaking of Her Hero or Heron uh, yes. uh, uh, of Alexandria. Yeah, I mean, he was an early scientist and he, he, he worked out the, 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 the harnessing of, of, of steam power. Yeah, and he used it to open temple doors and, and you know, but you see, you could do it today with somebody who is totally ignorant. You know, you could show them a, a mobile phone and say, you know, look, pictures, <laughs> words, music. Uh, it's magic. It's my God doing that. And and um, and what what other reference would they have? You know, you, yes. So you can use science to fool people. Uh, and and I guess yeah. And and so and the priests were among the first to latch onto these ideas. I mean, yeah, there, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. And in fact, the Christians even acknowledge that because when they would despoil in the pagan temples, they just loved to expose the, the, the false idols and the tricks they had. You know, they, they didn't, they didn't, as so long as they kept it away from their own door, their own magic was, was sacrosanct. But these little tricks were, were you know, and, 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 and in many cases they've adopted them. Still happen today. You know, you go, go to a ceremony, I think it's in Greece, where you can have a vial of blood and on a magic day of the year, it, it sort of goes from this solid to a liquid and, and everyone's uh, delighted by it. There's a, a, every year at Easter in, in, in Jerusalem, you have holy fire, don't you? In, 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 in the church of the sepulchre, holy sepulchre, you, you know, they all gather and, 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 and sort of lights come down from the sky, you know, and, it, and, it, it, and it's, it's supposedly you know, magical. It's supposedly magical, but it, not just someone lighting something and it all lights up, you know. But people's desire to believe is very strong. Yeah. I, and, you know, I, I've got friends like that, as, as we all have. You know, they, they, they like to tell me about, oh, there's more mysteries than we understand. And, you know, it's, it's all a bit, who, you know, hocus pocus. Yeah, I mean, it's, you, are, you are fighting, uh, or we are all fighting this, uh, the, you know, the desire to make the universe conform to our ideas. But it doesn't. Mary, Mary's Mary crying blood on these statues and 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 the cookie of Jesus or the the cracker of Jesus with the red his it's turning into him and yeah so I I agree this is all superstition 
Um, you know, it's maybe pulled some people through some hard times. I get it. Um, but I think it's done overall as uh, I just recently uh, interviewed yesterday, uh, Aaron, Aaron Raw. I think that's how he likes me to pronounce his name. And he was like, it's done more harm, though, than it's done good. If we if we had moved a little past this, uh, we would be in a better place uh, scientifically. Um, I think universally as humans dividing each other over what you think about a god or a, a theology it's like this is absurd i i used to be that way trust me i can i'm 100 percent can vouch what it did in my mind and how i thought i was superior in my belief system than other christians we aren't even talking about the ones that are completely lost okay we're just talking about the guys who are supposed to be my brothers you know and it's like oh gosh i'm so glad i escaped that box so i want to go back to to paul for our audience sake, because a lot of people are going to enjoy this discussion, but tell us some weird stuff about like, what is some like red flags that you found out? I mean, example, Paul is on a ship headed to Rome and a shipwreck happens or, <laughs> you know, like, let's talk about some well, funny stuff. Well, this is his fine voyage to Rome, isn't it? I mean, it, 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 for a start, it's very, very curious how he even gets to Rome, right? Because... There is a theological need for him to go to Rome. Jesus has told him he's going to testify in Rome for, you know, uh, for him. So, um, so the, the story writer has got to get him to Rome. Now, there's a really weird bit here because he eventually after he, the, he causes a riot in, in Jerusalem and the Romans, a whole cohort of Romans rescue him and take him down to, to, to the, their capital, Caesarea, um, they take him down there and 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 he's in jail. Yeah, he's put in jail. He's he's waiting for somebody to come from 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 Jerusalem, but this guy never comes. So Paul is left in jail for two years. For two years, um, but then a new governor comes and he decides to put Paul in front of uh, Herod, you know, King Herod, and, and this is Herod the second, and and he says to him. Uh, uh, I can't see any reason why you're why you're uh, why we've got you here, but Paul, out, you know, basically says I appeal to Caesar, and then this convenient King Herod says, oh well, as he's appealed to Caesar, that there's really nothing we can do. He's got to go to Rome now, and you think, well, hang on, this is a king and a local king and the local governor. And they couldn't just say to Paul, well, there's nothing to answer for. Let him out, you know, send him on his way. No, he's got to go to Rome now. So, uh, uh, you know, no, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a sort of a, a mismatch of logic. You know, they, you can't imagine a situation where a, a tough guy, you know, a tough guy like the, 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 the provincial governor of, of Judea, you know, feels like, oh, he's uttered the magic words, appear before Caesar, I can't do a thing now, it's out of my hands. I mean, that is just not plausible, just not plausible. Then he gets put on the boat with 276 other people, as far as I know, I can remember call, and off he goes to Rome, but the boat, you know, gets into a storm. Now, this storm lasts an unimaginable two weeks, I think it is, two weeks, Two weeks, they're lost in a storm you know, on the Adriatic. You know, they're two weeks, and who takes charge? Well, ultimately, Paul. Paul takes charge. He's a prisoner, but he takes charge. He forbids them to launch the lifeboat. He forbids them to launch the lifeboat. They don't launch the lifeboat, right? And the, the ship eventually gets stranded on an island, which by tradition is identified as Malta. And, you know... And so they all get saved and they're all ashore. And then we get another little episode. Paul gets bitten by a snake, right? Gets bitten by a snake. But this deadly snake has no effect on Paul, right? Another proof that he's got, you know, he's he's working for the correct God. And, and, and you know, it's, and, and this is an island which, his, you know, from... from uh, Archaeobiologists tell us, you know, it's never had poisonous snakes, but you know, we have to make an exception that you know, on this occasion there were pies and sapes, you know, and 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 so it goes on each particular little episode, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it, you oh, the 
the gospel or the yeah the gospels or the new testament never spends more than two or three lines on any of these little things you you know it's it's an economy of of, of story writing you know it's very very succinct to the point of absurdity but so so then okay they make they when when the, when the weather breaks they they set off for rome now interesting if you look at that whole episode of going into Rome. What is it exactly? Well, it's the culmination of Paul in chains being taken to prison for, for you know, to appear before Caesar, but also a grandee of the church arriving in grand style. You know, when they arrive at the Port of Putoli, brethren, magically appear and ask him to stay with him for a, a, a week. And you think, where's that come from then? You know, the, you know the, the, both the uh, uh, strange appearance of Christians and the fact that now they're going to take, uh, having spent, I think it's two months, three months on Malta, they're going to now take another week's holiday. And how? How? There's not just Paul and his Roman guard. You know, there's two or three of his friends plus all the other prisoners. You know, it, it, it's just absurd. So somebody has sort of like an empty hotel in this Roman pool. Oh, yeah, and we happen to be Christians. Come and stay with us a week. You know, it just doesn't work. And it parallels you know, the gospel some. Like this, what you just described, like paramount parallels Jesus in so many ways. Even in all of this, like even in like the gospel of Mark, where the added part of the serpents you can be bitten by tread on serpents or bitten by serpents. You can tell this is Pauline, but also him going to to before Herod. I mean, he went to a he went to a different Herod, but he ends up before Herod, and Herod's like, I don't see any problem with this guy, and you know he doesn't appeal to Caesar, so to speak. But later in the story, it doesn't take long before they're going, we're going to go to Caesar, the 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 Jews. So there's some weird parallels. They're not identical, but they're there. Yeah, the story, as you, as you correctly point out, the story echoes earlier stories over and over and over. You know, the, the it's like, well, I've, I've often used on my webs, website, why waste a good yarn? You know, they have a little little bit, little snippet of a story and they reuse it again and again and again. It echoes in all the other stories and, 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 and it shows, you know, they're not even great original story writers. You know, they're not dreaming up a new wonderful story. They're just taking an earlier story and moving the furniture around a little bit. You know, that's all they're doing. And, what, and, what, would and happen, so, what would happen if we removed the book of Acts? I mean, even the Wii version all that. What if we just remove the book of Acts? What will we know about this guy, Paul? Very little indeed. Very little indeed. We'd know something. Judging if we judge the the epistles to be genuine, then we know something. But the the story is then much very truncated. It's really just around the shores of the Aegean. You know, he, 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 so there, there, there's there's none of this uh, uh, drama. I mean, Acts is is a, is a it's, a, it's almost like a soap opera, isn't it? It's a soap opera. It's, it's simple enough for the simplest of people to follow. You know, it's people coming and goings and, you know, it, but but it, 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 none of it has credibility as a historical event. That's, a, that's why, I mean, I don't care if people have a Christian religion and believe a lot of nonsense. What has it got to do with me? They can believe what they like. But it, it, but if we are looking at history, you know, then we've got to say there's nothing to substantiate this entire story. There really isn't. There really isn't. And I'd like, on occasion, I'd like to find something that actually, actually it sort of hit the button, that actually was genuine. But... What, what convinces me more than ever that it, none of it is, is the fact that nothing ever fits. Nothing ever fits in with real history. You look at, say, you know, the, the, the geography of the Holy Land and, and all the places where, well, we get, you know, drifted off on Jesus, but Jesus, of course, goes to all kinds of towns, but they're just the towns that we don't know of. All the towns that are there, well, they don't get mentioned, you know. I mean, we we have a big town called Sepphoris that's only a few few miles from from Nazareth. That existed. That doesn't get mentioned. This little town called Nazareth. Well, that's the one that gets mentioned. Although we can't find any evidence that it was 
Nazareth at the first, in the first century. You know, why doesn't Paul go there? Why doesn't he go and see where his Lord was born? Well, perhaps he doesn't even know that story. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I really enjoy those type of ideas because it really screws the whole thing up when you don't see it like that, you know? Yeah, you've got to have... Um, I don't know, just a warm feeling that it's all really a true story and we're just trying to we use our faith to make it all make sense if we have faith then you know you can square the circle you know you can turn a triangle inside out you can you can do all kinds of things because well faith makes you know contradictions between the gospels oh well that's no real problem you know um, you know, we, we, we're not worried about that, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If you don't have that willingness to be gullible, then then, then, then you, you do have a real problem seeing this as a real story. What about Paul? <clears throat> I love this one. I'm sure you, you got a few of these. Paul seems to be quite obsessed in many places with um, not only defending that he's not a liar, but also that he seems to poke at the super apostles. He, he, there's something wrong with, and, and this could be simply like these charlatans, like you said, if they're authoring this in the name of a guy named Paul, they may be trying to override the validity of an original movement by suggesting, ah, eh, yeah, 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 you know, we know about them because he can't deny them something to keep part of this thing. But he seems to constantly talk crap about the 12 in a way. And most Christians overlook that, that he's like, oh, and the super apostles or, you know, claiming anyone who teaches another gospel other than the one in Galatians, then the one he preaches, let him be a curse. He has to say that twice. So, and then he right then goes into the breath of Cephas and James. And it's like, what's your problem with these guys? You know, what, what's going on with these? And we have letters written by these people, which, uh, once again, here goes another people writing in the name of. And it's like, hold on. James wrote letters. Peter supposedly wrote letters. All these people are writing letters. Paul's writing letters. But Paul talks crap about this James guy who's in the same book, the canon. And this Peter guy is like a goon of this guy, James. And... And somehow the church has rectified it by making the book of Acts coming later. Let's make this thing, you know, together. I doubt that if there were historical, if we were to just presuppose, let's just not argue that point for just a second. I bet, and you'd probably agree, that these guys never rectified, never saw things eye to eye, and never probably agreed. The book of Acts makes it appear like, oh, well, Paul came in and he took a Nazarite vow or whatever it was and yeah, yeah. But, but Acts is clearly an attempt to um, heal rifts, cover over divisions. Yes, it is. It 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 also suggests what it's a later work. It's very clear because it's trying to do a tidy up, harmonising uh, uh, operation on very irregular badly fit in parts of what they've composited together. It's clear. I mean, if we bear in mind that. The, the Christian story of you know first Jesus, then his disciples, then the, the then then the, then the church follows. You know, in some hum, harmonious progression is is all bogus, right? You have various factions under various different names, Nazarenes and Marcionites and various church. They're all in competition. They're they're sort of competing with other non-Christian religions as well, and there's no harmonious story, but there are victors at certain stages. And, and if we allow in a period of at least a century, there are certain stages where maybe a movement is popular at one stage. Ten years later, it's disappeared. You know, you just think of religious groups now. They move on. Look at the history of the Mormon church and how it's split into so many different, you know, latter-day churches of different description because somebody jumps up and says i want to be leader and somehow you know there's there's a rift and there's a, a and, and a separate church is born i mean it happened back then as it happens now you know so uh, there, there, there there is no no, no 
no real story as it would be intended, but there is a, 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 a whitewashed story, which, of course, yeah, you're absolutely right, acts as that document that tries to do that, tries to present it all. and uh, But it sets up a terrible contrast. If You know, could the contrast between Paul in his as he comes across from the epistles ascribed to him, and Paul as he appears in the Acts of the Apostles. You're looking at two different characters here. You know, the one in the Acts of the Apostles is a, a team player. You know, he's a good guy. He goes to the temple with the, the Twelve. But, you know, in his own, you know, as you say, Paul owed nothing to any man. No, it came from Scripture and his own inspiration and so on. So he's a bombastic bully the one who wrote epistles, but he's Mr. Nice Guy, who actually has a very passive role. You don't worry about he's active or passive. He's taken places in Acts of He's delivered here. He's taken there. They took him back to Tarsus to get him out the way. You know, but the real Paul wrote epistles. He doesn't get taken anywhere. He, he's, the, he's the guy who, who decides where people go. So that's what happens when you try and harmonize what can't really be harmonized. Like Galatians, when he says, I told him to his face. Yeah, absolutely. And in, in Acts, it's like, you know, and and me, me and Peter were cool, and you know they they had questions, and and I I paid for the four guys as vows, and you know we're cool. And James was like, oh man, you're on the same team, cool, high five. All right, go go do what you were doing, man. You're cool with the law. And then Paul's like, screw the law, don't obey the law. The law's the enemy. It's like, dude, what is going on? Yeah, I totally agree. I think this is so. I love this stuff though because it really opens yeah. up my mind. But I mean, there is a there is a basic. I think, you know, uh, reality, the fact, you know, Mark 1 of the story, not reference to the Apostle Mark, but Mark 1 of the story, you, Jesus appoints 12 men, he gives them the power over spirits and to heal people, you know, he, he, he commissions them to take the, take the faith across the world, right? And then you read, hang on, we're all on Paul now, they've sort of disappeared, they've been not only marginalised, they've been basically forgotten. I mean, seven of the, of, of the 12 don't even get any sort of write-up in the Acts of the Apostles. You know, they disappear. That's why probably very few Christians could name them. You know, they're, they're, just, uh, they're non-entities. They should be the most famous people in history, aren't they? You know, but no, then then Mark 2 of the story is it's about Paul spreading the faith, not the 12 spreading the faith. So it's it's a, a, a major rewire. And I, I think... It illustrates, I think, by that stage, the church in the early twenty-second century, the church had, had set up its 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 little enclaves. It it's, it's it had its little congregations. It had you know, the the beginnings of elders and bishops, and then it needed to legitimise where it had come from. They couldn't just say we've just devised a new religion. They had to give it a backstory, and 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 Paul was the backstory. That's and that's why you see Paul in the Gospels. I mean, it's it's this is a interesting uh, to me. It's just interesting because what really helped me originally deconstruct was when I saw patterns repeat themselves in Old Testament stories, and then saw it in the New. And that's what made me go, hold on, hold on. You're telling me that this literally happened, and it's happened literally three, four different times in this. Everything from the 72s and the numbers and the and even elements that played a role, you know, like in Moses story was like fire by day or fire by night and cloud by day. These same elements were in Elijah and Elisha story, um, Moses and Joshua. And then, of course, John the Baptist were Jesus and the church. And I saw these patterns and themes from Adam and Eve to Abraham to, and just said, dude, either. God is so beyond, okay, that he, he somehow was able to do this, which I, when I was a believer, I mean, for crying out loud, you, you accept almost anything because you're like, this just makes it that much more brilliant. Or you go with the like more what plausible explanation is these guys knew their stories quite well, and they knew how to write stories. And, you know, I watched the movie Iron Man, and I can look and go, wow. I watched that movie Iron Man leaving there really wishing there was a real Iron Man that could do the things the video, the movie shows, you know? <laughs> like, I wish this is true, you know? Do we have that technology? Not yet, I don't think. But nonetheless, 
I'm like, dude, what if there is an Iron Man? You know, it's so hocus pocus, though. It's like abracadabra. So is there anything else about Paul that we should know that you, you can think of uh, that's some funny things? Because you bring, you bring light to it. I think it's funny that, you, you know, you don't just like, you know, point out issues. You kind of make it, I guess to say you poke fun at it. And I like that because you try to make humor. Well, I, I do I do that as a byproduct. Uh, the fact that it, it, it is so transparent, it is so silly in many ways. Um, it, yes, I should have been able to find evidence, having gone all these different places where Paul went, and yet you don't find evidence of the story. You find evidence of how the fraud was concocted. That's that's the evidence that you get, you know, the fact that you can find Paul's uh, elbow in about four different places in, in the Mediterranean, you know. You know, the fact that you know, this, this shipwreck on the island of Malta, well, that's only what the Roman Catholic says. The Roman Catholic Church says, Greek Catholic Church has an island in, 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 in off the coast of Dalmatia. That's where, you know, the, so it's, well, which one was it then, you know? Well, it depending on which side you back during the Crusades, you know, because when the Byzantines had those islands, it was there. But when, it, when, when the, 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 the Western armies took over, you know, it moved, it moved to Malta, didn't it? And, 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 and you just see the transparency of this damn story. The trouble is, of course, people don't want to get into that level of detail of really fact-checking. You know, it's just, it, you know, there's a there's a promise there, isn't there? There's a promise there that you'll live forever if you accept Jesus. There's a promise that you'll meet your loved ones, you know. It'll all be happy, hunky-dory. And if you're so damn committed to that idea, you're, you, you, you know, you, you, it, it makes it an uphill struggle for those of us who, who say, well, look, tell me the truth, whatever the truth is, you know. I, I, that and, and and of course, plus the fact people who push the 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 religious agenda are making a good living out of it. That's, That's true. why. That's yeah. true. You know, they even you know dear old Bart Ehrman. You know, he, he's proved many times how how fraudulent the the Christian story is, but he still clings to. Oh, well, there's a new historical Jesus. Yeah, yeah. He knows <laughs> he knows which side his bread is buttered, doesn't he? So. Uh, <laughs> he, hey, yeah, he's good at it. He's good at it. You know, I'd laugh if the uh, if the church has uh, locations for his foreskin. Can you imagine Paul, the apostle of Christ? His foreskin is located over here. I mean, this guy was so <laughs> against circumcision in his letters, and then he—it's just so crazy. That, but doesn't Acts even play out this funny, interesting role? This tells you, in my opinion. The church that the time the book that the book of Acts is written is clearly trying to say you don't have to be circumcised. It's clearly saying this because Paul is arguing with Peter and like I've heard this explained so many times. And this is a huge Protestant Catholic debate. This is from someone who comes from inside of the Kool-Aid drinking box. OK, and while I was in there drinking this Kool-Aid, watching Catholics and Protestants debate, they argued Every time, and the Protestants would point out something, you know, it's almost like, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Matthew uh, Dillahunte says, he says, if you want to know how a religion is wrong, ask another religion. Well, the, the Protestants will make this argument and go, oh, you say Peter had the keys of the, you know, like he's the first pope. You think he's the first pope. How did the first pope get it wrong then when Paul came up? Because it's really Paul against Peter. If you go to the Roman Catholicism, it represents Peter technically. And Paul, yeah. you know, represents the the Protestant or what Protestants really took over later. They always go to Paul and use really grace through faith, not of works. Well, I thought this was interesting that they make Paul rebuke Peter who handed Jesus hands the king the keys to the kingdom to. It's like What's going on here, dude? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, well, it, it, it makes you smile if you can think rationally about something which many people don't don't even want to be questioned. I mean, they don't want <laughs> this stuff questioned. And if they're uh, 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 sufficiently enlightened to um, uh, consider ideas, they'll be uh, 
they'll need huge amounts of convincing, huge amounts of convincing. You know, it, it's like you're ask, you're, they're presenting a silly idea, but they expect a huge quantity of very rational evidence ever to, you know, to question that idea, whereas it should be on the face of it questionable in itself. Question in itself, the you know, the, you know, the 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 arguments made made for for religious claims, walking on water, whatever it might be, you know, that that is a questionable claim. You don't need a huge load of evidence to to prove that is wrong. But you know, religious people are, are so so committed that yeah, that's 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 the bell. We, have, we that's a, that's that's the, 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 what we have to take on that challenge, don't we? I, le- okay. I legitimately dealt with this. <laughs> what, what you're saying here, just the other day, I told the guy that you know scholars, it's pretty much a, a universal consensus that critical scholars say Abraham didn't exist. And this guy wrote me, literally, and I had to post it in this myth, mythicist room, mythicist versus historicist uh, Jesus room. And he says, that's a lie. The, the historical Abraham did exist. I know because Jesus, I've met Jesus, Jesus, the historical Jesus, took me to see the historical Abraham, and I met him. You may not believe me, he said, but this is the case. And I just simply, being kind, wrote back, were you taking dimethyltryptamine or are you on drugs? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thankfully, we, we probably don't have too many of that type of Christian in this country, because actually Christianity is quite a minority cult within within Britain, you know, and, and within Europe, I'd say. You know, as we said, I think on the last time we spoke, it's America that's holding out for Christ. You know, you, you you're sort of regimented and 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 and, and so conditioned to believe uh, in what is basically a very primitive set of ideas i mean you know we've had the 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 enlightenment we've had the age of science you know science now plots the 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 furthest reaches of the universe and to believe in this you know god from the bronze age and 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 a, a a quaint but copied copied story regurgitated story with just a different hero from 2000 years ago um well, men of science don't entertain it, do they? <laughs> the educated elite don't entertain it, it but but a, the popular the populace uh, entertains this idea. I think um, a lot of it applies to patriotism. And it, look, my father, and I'm not against that. My father's a Green Beret. He retired Special Forces, but I do had the, growing up. I had this sense of connecting my pride, American pride, and being pro-military, pro-America to my Christianity. And the, the fact that they, I guess you could say politically intertwined, you know, I grew up very conservative. Uh, I no longer vote. Now, I, I get people who, who are on the opposite <laughs> side who are looking at me going, you stupid, you, the non-voters are the reason why we didn't win, you know, and this and that. And I'm like, it's for me. I mean, I I couldn't vote not long ago because I was a drug addict who made some mis- mistakes. You know, I lost my rights, but I'm yep. kind of glad I did because personally, I don't even I don't know. I don't want to get involved in it because too many. It feels like religion. I'm not look. I'm not trying to say that there aren't political things we should probably you know try to stand up for and vote for that we want change in the world, especially when it comes to freedom of religion and thought and, and, and not teaching that Jesus created the earth 6,000 years ago in school. Okay. That, that or don't dumb our kids down. Um, at the same time, I feel like it's the same veracity that comes into Paul and all these things that we do religiously and arguments and debates is the same thing politically. I witness in America of Republican versus Democrat. And it's like, yeah, we're not saying the name Jesus, but it feels much like religion. And I just, I'm like, ah, I try to, I, 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 I'm happy. I'm happy where I'm at. No, I, I empathize with you with you saying that you don't vote because, you know, most, most of my life I've never voted, to be honest. You know, to me, I, I never saw any, any political movement that, that I could endorse so hard, hard, hardly to even go and vote. You know, it's, it, and our politics has become weird in the same way that your politics has become weird. 
<laughs> dare I say, your politics is even weirder than ours, you know. But, it's so you know. bad, riots. I mean, like, we're talking hate. If you voted for the opposite side, there's literal hate of you. It is yeah. it is like the 50s with black and whites, except it's no longer a race thing, so to speak, even though there is some of that some places. It's now become what's your – are you wearing an elephant? Are you wearing a – you know, because you had the Republican symbol? Or are you wearing a dim- – I just stay out of it, man. I just uh, I wish that it wasn't like that because I'd love to go vote and say, hey, I feel like I believe in what these people are doing all the way across the board. But, you know, choose which evil, lesser evil or I just kind of don't get involved, if that makes sense. I do this right here. I deconstruct people and people who watch this go, wow, OK, I no longer have to think like that. I think you're doing a, a, a grand service. You know, you, you, you really are. And you have a. How dare I say you have a lovely manner? It's 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 it, it, and it's and it's great to talk to you. It really is. It really is. You you have an open mind, uh, but you're but you're sensible. <laughs> I try to be. I don't want to be mean. I'm not, I'm not trying to sound patronising, but you know, I, I sometimes get interviewed by like I've been invited to appear on Christian stations, and and you 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 from the word go, you you know it's like all oh, right, we we we're gonna have an issue here. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I love that though because I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exact. I actually was invited to speak on a show recently with a guy named Asher, and uh, and he's a rabbi, and now he's a rationalist yeah. rabbi. Which he even I, he's like, "What are you?" I'm like, "I'm agnostic." I guess by definition, I'm an atheist though because I don't worship a god. But whether there is something out there, divine or something, I don't know. I'm mean, you know, I don't I don't believe in that. And he's like, well, I'm an uh, agnostic, even though I do believe that there may be a God, the God of the Bible, which, he, you know, the Hebrew scriptures is Yahweh. And he went in this interesting thing. I had never heard a Jew take this time, type of position. He even goes so far as only the five books. And he says that the prophets were only written during a time and they were only meant for a specific time for specific people. However, he believes that What happened is when they took away rights to read Torah to the Jews, the Jews used, or Israel, used the prophets to get as much of the law out of the prophets as they could till they were allowed to go back to five books. And they elevated the prophets on a level equal to Torah when they never were. So there's so Mm. many complexities just in the, the presuppositions to what we find in the New Testament. It's like, okay, dude, like... If you really just think this thing made it and it was good to go, you got more faith than anyone I've ever met because that's serious faith once you start seeing the critical stuff we're looking at here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, m- most, uh, talking of the Jews, most Jews that, of my acquaintance in this country are actually quite secular. You know, they, I, 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 it, it, it sometimes uh, I, I get a little bit annoyed when when – when people speak of the Jews, specifically the ancient Jews, as if they all agreed, and they all agreed with their rabbi, you know, they all agreed with the, the temple priests, like they were just one herd. Now, there was maybe that tendency, but, you know, by gosh, there were lots of divisions within the Jews. A lot of Jews became Romans. They embraced the pagan religions. You know, it, 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 the idea that there was just one homogenous Jew is just ridiculous, just ridiculous. And, and some some most outstanding writers have been atheistic Jews, for Christ's sake, you know? That's so. true. Ken, Ken, how can people uh, help support what you do or get your book? Is there a website? Is there a YouTube channel? What do we got here, boss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's not forget. <laughs> get the book. It's a very thick book. <laughs> not, lots of information. Uh, but it's very it's very readable. It's very readable. That, that's the probably the most helpful thing people could do. Because uh, at the end of the day, um, I don't need a new television. But you know, it's it's nice that, that the people get the word out. You know, they, 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 that gives a, like you say, many people will make the comment. I hadn't thought of that. You know, they just hadn't challenged even 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 just a very basic proposition. There was Jesus never existed. It might oh, 
didn't he? I never thought of that. I assume because everyone goes around speaking about Jesus, he he was a historical character, but he's no more real than you know William Tell or you know uh, 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 King Arthur, uh, all the other mythological characters of history. You know, it's, it's, but, but but of course they don't have a religion stuck upon them, do they? I mean, I'm often struck. It's, it's getting into a little bit of the detail, but I'm often struck the difference between following what the Jews did or didn't do, and maybe, say, the tribe of the Iceni in eastern Britannia at the same time. You know, Nero had to send his legions into Britain to knock the... the, knock the... Now, would we embrace an ancient British god? You know, would, 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 would we entertain that there was someone walking around? You know, it's just so arbitrary that this story out of a little province, sub-province in the Roman Empire, produced the world's truth. It's, yeah. simply, it's simply an historical accident. It's a simple, that's all it was, you know. Constantine, it, Constantine was back in uh, Apollo. Then he thought, give, give this Jesus God a, a chance, you know, and, that, and, and suddenly the church was in there, into the corridors of power. I think there was a – I personally think that there was a um, a temptation to go toward a monotheistic uh, tendency that, that unified one thought because one might go, well, Apollo, why are you leaving out uh, such and such or why are you leaving out – why not come at it from a view that eliminates all gods so you can't have your different flavors and everyone tastes the same cup of tea? So let's let's get under one flag, one idea, one mind, and and everybody could be controlled with the same pretty packaged. Yes. I, I mean, look, yeah. and Jesus is so similar to other. We did that show with Doctor Bob. He's so similar to these other pagans that some of the church fathers actually argue that point. Hey, just like you believe in Apollo and his virgin birth, uh, you know, believe in Jesus and his virgin birth. It's like, oh, that, well. Yeah, why can't I? I? I could see a pagan going. You know what? Good point. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to your pagan, or or he probably didn't call it pagan. We call it pagan, but he, I'll go check out your god then. Cool. They were into that stuff, so yeah. The the the, the polytheists were both tolerant of each other, but had very similar ideas to what the, the Christians tried to monopolize and did monopolize, and then their bishops became the top dogs mm. and, and it was a totalitarian system or an attempt to force a totalitarian system on the roman empire and that was to the roman emperors very appealing you know yeah but very damaging too they collapsed oh. not long after that so absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if anything yeah. we can take away is guys be skeptical Check out Ken Humphrey's book. I appreciate you joining for the show. This was a wonderful podcast. It's been a pleasure. You take care now. Yep. And if you guys have any questions, you have any ideas, anything you want to hear from Ken, let me know. I'll try and prepare for the next show that we do with him. I'm always a fan of his work. And obviously what you produce is not only educational, but you have a sense of humor about it. And that's what I appreciate. You're not just uh, rude and mean. You know, you – you're rude, mean, and nice at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh, you so good. much. Well, we are Mythvision. <laughs>